very much, Commissioner Henderson, also the Chairperson of the Human Rights Commission and uh, the Commissioner, thank you very much for the opportunity this morning to participate again in this very important dialogue. Uh, maybe in terms of my input this morning, I've got three parts and I'll try to be very concise. The one is just to give a statement of the factual situation in terms of SAPs and human rights and the financial implications. Uh, then to focus on one resolution that was made by the Portfolio Committee and then seven measures or steps that I believe from a practical point of view that can be implemented and we looked at as a way to ensure that the SAPs move uh, in terms of the report on human rights. And I, I think it's also to do with our oversight work, but also our visits to police stations and interactions. For instance, yesterday I visited again two police stations, and in my interaction with the management and the working members, one gets a feel of what is really happening on the ground, what are the issues, and what should, should be done going forward. Now, first, I just want to give an indication of the monetary uh, aspect of the now, the civil claims lodged against the SAPs amounted to 14 billion in 2015-16, of which 20, 290 billion was paid out, and 7398 billion was cancelled or reduced. Now, considering the actual number of cases against, uh, brought against the SAPs in 2015-16, the department had a total of 16,000 new incidents of civil claims against the SAPs, which represents a 67% increase. Now, this is a significant increase of 40% when compared to the 2887 new incidents leading to civil claims in the previous financial year 2014-15. Now, the increase in the new incidents leading to civil claims lodged against the SAPs is largely attributed to unlawful arrests and detentions, collisions, assaults, and shooting incidents. But of course, a lot of these incidents also relate to human rights violations. So, in terms of the broad picture, there's indeed an increase. Now, if you look at the Marikana incident and the estimated value of the litigated claims of the 662 plaintiffs, it comes to an amount of 1.171 billion rand. Now, um, in terms of the broad environmental aspects, the Department of Police, in terms of budget cuts, will have to reduce their staff complement by 3,000 members in the next three years in terms of the budget cuts by Treasury. That means also more pressure in terms of the frontline staff and also in terms of pressure in terms of executing their duties effectively and in line with the Constitution. So that is the broad framework we're looking at. Now, of course, SAP's got a budget of about 68 billion in the coming financial year and with about 193,000 people to execute their duties with a population of 55 million people. But there's seven, I think, measures that can be implemented as we go along, maybe to address some of the issues. That's quite evident and also referred to by Melanie here today. The first important issue is leadership and tone from the top. Now, human rights is, is sometimes, the, the reaction to human rights is sometimes also what is coming from the top. Now, we believe that the executive authority, that's the minister and the deputy minister, and the top leadership of the SAP should be the main messengers in promoting a culture of good conduct in line with human rights and a human rights approach. Um, if the messages coming from them is not in line with that approach, the ordinary member at the station level or in the specialized unit level will not be able to interpret it correctly. So it's very much important learning also from the last 10, 15 years that that approach the tone from the top should be correct. There should be an emphasis on human rights, very importantly. We can't go uh, with the approach of krachtdadigheid or force at all costs. That is not the right approach. <coughs> then I just want to refer to um, the, in brief to the resolution that was made by the Portfolio Committee um, last year on the issue of uh, uh, in terms of the, the management and, the, and, and human rights. Now, the committee recommended that the SAP national and provincial senior management should attend a workshop on the Constitution with a specific reference to civilian oversight, the rule of law, and the separation of powers by the end of the current financial year. Now, um, SAP's 
came back to us and said that in order to ensure that all senior management be workshopped, a task team between the SAPs and the National School of Government was established, and the task team was compiled and finalized the working document, which covers the following aspects, the constitution and the citizen-centered approach, mandates, legislation, policy, and the codes of conduct, ethical leadership and decision making, political and administrative interface, and human rights. And the target of these workshops would be the top management and, of course, other role players. They've also identified, of course, the Human Rights Commission as part of the panel that will participate. We believe that's a very important um, focus area that should give the, give the necessary attention. Now, the second, let's say, uh, matter that we believe is critical. I think Melanie referred to the NDP, the implementation of the NDP, but the establishment of the National Policing Board is overdue. Now, the NDP states that a national policing board should be established and multi-sectoral and multi-disciplinary expertise to set standards for recruitment, selection, appointment, and promoting police officials and police officers. The board should also develop a code of ethics and analyze the professional standing of policing <coughs> based on international norms and standards. Now, this policing board will be critical. In other jurisdictions, like in the UK and Northern Ireland, it plays a very important role in setting the standards, but also promoting a human rights culture. The third issue that we think is very important is the issue of technology or digital policing. Now, technology solutions or digital policing is the future of policing. The provision of state-of-the-art technology, apps to frontline police officers, especially body cams to enhance security and com complement conduct by police officers and the public is the way to go. Jurisdictions in the US and the UK have com commenced with this approach and feedback in this regard is very positive, so I think we think that it should be there. Fourthly, one of the levels of management in the police that, that I think is very important in the execution of human rights is the station commanders or the unit commanders. Because members take their cue from the approach and ethos of the station commander. If a station commander is not checking the DVA register, or if the station commander don't encourage um, reporting to IPED on certain violations of the IPED Act, members will also not adhere to that uh, um, approach. So the constant training and awareness for frontline members should be evaluated on a constant basis. Then the fifth factor is the monitoring role of the community on community policing forums. Currently, community policing forums is with the SAPs. Now, it's envisaged in the white paper on policing that the community police forums will move to the civilian secretariat. And that's critical because communities and community police forums could play a major monitoring role, but also a supportive role in ensuring that the police apply human rights standards and that they are here to by the local police, especially in the cases of arrests and detentions, because that's the two areas where most of the human rights violations occur. That is arrest and detentions. So it's critical. You can't have the community police forum actually, um, you know, very close to the station command. There must be distance, because as an oversight institution, it can also ensure that there is the necessary oversight, even at the local level. So that move of, of the civilian secretary, I think, is critical. <coughs> then um, there's a very important, interesting uh, phenomenon that we saw in our oversight or study visit to Northern Ireland, where the police is required on a biannual basis to report on the use of force. So each police precinct must report how many rubber bullets did they use, how many batons, charges were used. So there is an obligation on the police to make that available then to the assembly as well as the independent police institutions. And we believe <coughs> maybe that is something we must look at now. To say, well, if you look at the civil claims, if you look at the picture in terms of conduct, if we don't see a, you know, a, a, a good reaction, Maybe the way to go is to report on the use of force, especially in terms of crowd control weapons, rubber bullets, water cannons, and, and then also a stricter compliance to human rights um, friendly methodologies. Maybe that's the way to go. And then finally, um, 
human rights is sometimes seen as a specific area of the police that must deal with it. Maybe the family violence unit, maybe the persons of, uh, responsible for DVA, and I think that is a mistake. Uh, human rights should be something that is um, across, uh, you know, is, 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 um, is, a, is a methodology or approach used in all spheres of the police. So also the inclusion of performance measures on compliance to human rights standards should be introduced across the organization. Now there was previously in terms of public order policing some uh, performance measurements in the APP of SAPS. But maybe, and, and that's maybe a debatable point, but maybe that's something that we should consider, that going forward that there should be also in the APP of the police um, a specific indication or performance management tool that they should be reporting on performance in that Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Commissioner of Human Rights Commission. As I've indicated that I'm representing General Mr. Moran, who was a to attend the issue.